I don't get what I want, I get what I need. Every single day I'm heading off to my dream and I get everything that I damn well please. I don't give a damn if you all listen to me. Hey guys, it's Andy Elliott. Welcome to the One Percenter Podcast. Today I've got a special guest, a real treat. He's an overcomer. Um, I, I love watching people that come up, okay? I mean, a lot of you right now, you've got scars, okay? I love people that got issues. I love people that got problems. People that in this world that go through stuff are the most dangerous. People that can handle adversity get to the top. People that can't ha- handle adversity get their ass kicked. Mm. And this guy loves it, and uh, he's a great leader, and he's a coach now. You know, our whole goal to make everybody great Our whole goal to make everybody great is to truly at one point have when you become great, teach others to be great. That's the whole goal, okay? There's this thing called fulfillment, the art of achievement and the art of fulfillment. The art of achievement, he's crushing it, making a ton of money, but he's got this fulfillment now where he's teaching a lot of people um, how to make money and how to kill it and crush it and how to not waste any more time while you got this short life and you got a lot to do, okay? So, man, thanks for being with us today. Number one, tell everybody what you're doing now. Yeah. Right, like what you're doing today, yeah. and um, and I've spent a lot of time with him, guys. I vouch for this guy; he's amazing. I just got back from Florida. He's got a beautiful wife, kids. They're super cool. Um, so he's an amazing person outside of business. Let me just say that because I think that's important to know. Um, but but also, I want I want you to tell him what you're doing now. Yeah. But then let's go back because you know, like I was talking to Andy Frizzell, he's a good buddy of mine, and 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 I like when he goes back and he tells me when they were buying the plywood and they're opening their first business and they didn't make money. How did they get through that? Right? So I want you to tell your story, guys, a story is going to change your life. And I think a lot of you are going to identify with him. He can do it. So can you, but tell him what you're doing now. And then let's go back and let's just go up the things that you learned, the lessons, the things you did, right. The things you did wrong. Yeah. And what, and then there's a lot of it back to today. (laughs) Yeah. So my name's Eric Klein, uh, 42 years old, uh, happily married to my beautiful wife, Shyla. I have two amazing kids. My daughter's 21 uh, in college right now, senior year. I got an 11-year-old son, and I just watched and witnessed you having an amazing conversation with him. And yeah, kids are the future, man. Man, when I when I tell you, I was I was standing back, honestly, trying not to get emotional um, because that that conversation was powerful, and I I appreciate you for having that. That's good. Um, the family. Yes, it's it's everything to me because uh, 14 years ago, I never thought I'd be sitting where I am today. Uh, my family obviously being one of my, my, my best accomplishments I've ever done. Um, but today, what am I doing today? I, I just under three years ago, jumped into the, the wholesaling industry for real estate. Um, I had just come off of a a massive lawsuit that I'll, I'll get into when we go back in the story. Um, but I did, you know, ended a lawsuit was wondering what I was going to do now as a grown man. Um, with a family, you know, just was getting ready to exit a company for stupid cash. And I lost it all, man. I lost, I lost uh, everything but $4 million. And I was, you know, me and my wife were making really good money and we were looking at a nine figure exit. And we went to. I, I, I want to tell everybody this is when you get tested. Yeah. Okay. I always say this stress test your, your marriage, uh. stress test. The things that are important to you stress test them because I see a lot of people and things like this happen and I see you and your wife here today and you're thriving. I know that that was hard. Yes. But but that's how I know that you guys are gonna be together till you die. Yeah. Because when you make it through that, well then yes. that's how you're powerful. And that's why the second round, it might be the twentieth round, you get yeah. stronger and each time most people can't take a blow like that. When you think something's gonna happen, which you'll tell a story. Yeah. Most people crumble and they're like, My life's over. Your life's never over. Right. Okay. In the middle of it, it seems like it. Dude, listen, (laughs) I always tell people like, dude, in three days, yeah, you're going to look back and you're going to realize that everything's okay. Yeah. You just got to give it a couple days to let time by. Yeah. You know what I mean? Of course. But by the way, but that's what's, that's why I think you're so uniquely qualified, immensely qualified to coach and help people because the things that have happened to you, you can make sure that they don't happen to anyone else. Yep. Dude, I love a coach with experience. I love a coach that has been burned. I love a coach that has burned people so they know that that's bad yep. too. I love people that have been through challenges because, dude, as I'm, as I'm coming up and, and somebody's going to help me, like, I want to know not what to just look for, but also, like, like what to, like, stay away from. Of course. Hey, guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments telling me that you need help. Do me a favor. I'm going to tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now, 918-210-0254, 918 918- 
210-0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. You know what yeah. I mean? Like like handshake agreements, contracts, yep. all this stuff. Like all this stuff matters. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, and there's a lot of people that are just like you mm -hmm. that lost just like you yeah. that never came back. And then there's ones that went 20 times bigger. I feel like that's yeah. where me and my wife are going. Exactly. That's yeah, why yeah. you're getting ready. That yeah. had to happen for you to get ready for the big daddy one to happen. Of course. So, uh, anyways, let's keep going. So that happens um, in three years, you've been able to build this whole this real estate wholesale game yes. to a whole new level. Now you teach all virtual sales, all virtual. But you 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 have a niche for wholesale real estate. You yes. learned really quick. Yeah. And you're making a lot of money with it, but you're teaching people how to make a lot of money with it. Yeah. So my my first twelve months in the wholesaling industry, I didn't know anything about real estate outside of buying personal residence yeah, for me and my wife. Yeah. That was it. That's all I knew. I've never flipped a home. I didn't know what an ARV was, how to run comps, how to underwrite a deal, none of that. But I picked, a, I knew how to get someone on the phone. I knew how to generate leads. You know sales. That's it. Yeah. And how to generate the traffic, mm -hmm. the leads to, to get yeah, people. Yeah, because you own call centers and stuff too, right? For the last 15 years, that's that's all I've done I is call so you, so you know how to generate leads and market. Yes. You know how to sell. Yep. So you, you're, in, you're in the the wholesale game now. And, and you said in 12 months you did what? First 12 months, I did 118 contracts for $2.6 million. And I netted it at fifty eight percent, which was one point five. Yep. And I had new industry, new, new brand new, new industry. Yeah, no netted industry. a million and a half my first twelve months. I love that. And anybody can do that, right? Yeah. Yes. So this is it, super easy. Yeah. Anybody watching this right now, just so we're aware, okay? If you're not making a million a year, by the way, you did this all through the phone. Uh, I never walked in a single. I want everybody to understand this. You create your own life. You do it from a phone. Yep. You guys will see a number on the screen. You guys just text that number. He's literally built out a training curriculum showing exactly how he did it. And yeah. you can just do it, rinse, repeat, it's done. Yeah. All right, let, let's keep rolling. So um, I'm in now just coming up on three years in the, the industry. I've done uh, just just over $8 million. Mm. Uh, again, all virtual. I don't go out to these properties. Um, in that short period of time, I've also built for the wholesaling industry uh, I own my own proprietary software for a CRM mm. that they can get on. That's super important. Yep. And then uh, I have uh, I have a pretty sizable call center that generates leads for the real estate space. Good, guys. So as you're watching this, remember that number I gave you. You guys can text him. You can ask him questions about a CRM. You can ask him questions about, obviously, his program, what they're yeah. doing. And then you can just learn. I mean, maybe you need leads. I mean, I'm just giving an example. Of course. Whatever it is, you guys... Um, can text. Remember, anything that I can do to provide value to our audience, like there's a lot of people right now that are on their journey, just like, look, let's go back three years ago. Yeah. Someone planted a seed. Yeah. I don't know who it was, but they planted a seed that made you get wholesale real estate. Of course. Okay, you didn't just go, man, I think I'm going to wholesale some real estate. Somebody no. said something at some point. Yeah. And you didn't know what to do. And you go, okay, I'm going to do that. And that's what I like to do with people, that people are in certain places in their life. And I think a lot of people are waiting for their, their opportunity, their way out. Of course. Does that make sense? Yeah, a lot so of So that's people. what they're waiting on, and, and this could be a lot of y'all's opportunity here. Yeah. So so let's go back to when you're younger now. So you're kicking ass. You did about 8 mil um, this last year. You're you're learning. You're growing. Obviously, it seems like you're playing the doubles game every year. Yeah. Okay, so I can guarantee if you did 8, now you're going to do 16. You're just going to keep rolling in this doubles game. But let's go back to... You know, where, where'd you come from? How were you raised? You know, what's life like? Because I think that right there, if I tell somebody, hey, this guy made eight million last year, he's in sales, people are like, oh man, um, I'm not qualified to do that because of this, 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 and this. Yeah. All that bullshit. So yeah. I want you to tell some of the nasty side of human beings that most people are afraid to tell. Yeah. And so that they can realize that whatever the hell they're up against, whatever they're trying to slay, whatever issue it is, that's all bullshit. And yeah. they can start today and go get it. So the, the guy sitting here today was not the same guy, let's say 15 years ago. We can go all the way back to my childhood. Listen, I grew up in a broken family. Um, my parents got divorced when I was in sixth grade and I was a middle child. And I remember, you know, my, my, my older brother was the jock. My younger brother was the mama's boy. Nothing wrong with that, but I, I was in the middle and I was lost. Mm -hmm. And when my parents, uh, in, when, I, when I was in sixth grade, decided to get a divorce, I remember that was the time where, you know, my, my, my 
younger brother went with mom. My older brother went, or actually they both went with my mom. And for the first time I was sitting in front of a judge in front of both my parents. And they were like, you have to pick which parent you want to go with awesome. in front of my parents. That's crazy. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt the podcast. All right, so as you're listening to my man, obviously cool, killer comeback story. This guy's crushing it, killing the game. If you're in virtual sales, he does so many things. But if you're in virtual sales, it means that like you make a living by the phone. You guys, you see this number on the screen, you need to text this number. This guy's is training modules, his courses that you can take, his curriculum will absolutely show you how to be a ninja on the phone. Not only how to smash everybody in the industry, but just how to be the best and make what you're worth. So if you're gonna take the time to you know, be on the phone, you might as well get paid all the dough, right? So you guys text this number below, um, he'll train you, he'll help you. Any questions you have, shoot him a text and uh, let's get back to the video. And knock on wood, man, I'm the only one right now in my family outside of my sister uh, that that is still married today. Everyone's gotten divorced, and uh, and um, I remember picking my father because I felt bad for him, and it was one of those I made a decision that wasn't I knew wasn't best for me, but it I felt bad for somebody. It was people pleasing, so I I, rem I remember like at sixth grade the first time I put a mood or mind altering substance in my body I was I was thirteen years old, mm -hmm. uh, going on fourteen. And the first time I ever drank, I blacked out drunk. And it was the best feeling because I didn't have to feel anything anymore. And from, from, from uh, 13 to 28 years old, I medicated myself heavily. Mm -hmm. with, with The drug that ultimately brought me to my knees was crack cocaine. Mm -hmm. I was kicked out of high school. I was kicked out of the military. Um, didn't get my license till I was 28, lost it at 22, four DUIs, five driving on suspended. Like I, I was a, everyone in my family disowned me, not cause they, they didn't love me. They just couldn't handle me. Yeah. And you, you know what I always tell people? I say, listen, dude, you know, hurt people, hurt people, yeah. or you turn your wounds into your weapons. Yes. And the deal is, is that when you're not around a good mentor. Yeah, 100%. And you're not around somebody that's telling you, like yep. the, the talk I had with your son, I'm saying, hey, let me tell you what I see in you. Let me tell you what you're going to do. Yeah. This is what I see happening over the next five months. Yeah. There wasn't people telling us that when we were younger. No. Okay, like I did the same thing kind of like on your deal. Hey, if I could have just found something to find interest in, yeah, I could have been really good at a lot of things earlier in life but yep. proximity is power so if you're around people doing drugs if you're around people that are giving you bad advice yeah well shit man it ain't like you're a bad person no you're just I mean, my bad people you're some of the five people you're around yeah i mean my father was my drinking buddy for many many years again right there you go. Yeah. yeah so the the for me what kind of it was my aha moment andy is um I was blackballed from all the, the union jobs in Chicago. I was a union carpenter at the time. And uh, I was, uh, at this time, I'm 28 years old, and I was able to get the my union to give me, out of my annuity, I was able to have them, uh, I manipulated $3,500, saying like I needed it for a, a place I was getting evicted out of or whatever. And at this time, I was renting a, house, a, a bedroom from a Chicago police officer. And he would rent these rooms out to all these college students. Well, I just so happened to be the one guy in there that wasn't going to college. I was actually in there doing dope. And uh, I had $3,500. And I, I remember the dope man would come to the, to the back door like clockwork for eight days straight. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was smoking crack. And uh, I, I, I was so paranoid. If I doubt anybody in this room has went eight days without sleeping before. But I was I was consecutively up to eight days with no sleep. This is crazy. Well, th th you, you'll see by the end of the story how crazy it really was. But it was ultimately the the pivotal mo moment for me that changed my life. Is uh, I'm pissing in the corner of the room because I couldn't go out of the the bedroom to to use the restroom. I was that paranoid. Um, I'm, I'm at this point 128 pounds. I'm stripping extension cords to gut them and pack sockets to put the crack on it to go out in the, the I'd, you know, get the courage to go out into the, to the kitchen and light a gas stove. And I was, I was smoking the, the socket off of this heat, but I had to get so close to the flame. I was literally burning my face. So I burned off all my eyelash, uh, eyebrows. I had no eyelashes. 
I had, you know, golf ball or baseball sized blisters on both sides of my face because I'd have to get down so so close and I would switch it because it would hurt so bad. And uh, you're crazy, son of a bitch. Uh, <laughs> hey, so hey, you know what I love though? I love that you know when you tell this story, right? Like most people won't tell anything. It was bad. Well, no, but they won't tell anything. Yeah. And I think a lot of people they're in prison because. They don't talk about any of the shit they've ever been through, right? And because they're ashamed of it, when really you're like, listen to me. Number one, I don't. I'm not saying I would go do it again, no. but I'm trying to tell you that wherever you are and whatever you've gone through and whatever the hell you're up against, yeah, you can beat it 100%, if you decide to man. make a decision. So tell yeah. us this, this pivotal moment. So like, I get it now. I see what is going on. I see the picture. I'm envisioning right. you right now. All right, now. you got like, it? All right. I, I, I Did I paint it, it good enough? Yeah, so, but, but it's real. Like, there's no sugar coating here. It, for, so I'm, I'm, I'm eight days into this, and, and, and at this point, you know, I'm, I'm under my, my covers in my room just shaking, sweating, and I hear the helicopters start going over the house. I hear the, the, the police line the street, the ambulance show up, the front door gets kicked in, and uh, I'm just in my room paranoid as can be thinking the gig's up my, my family know everyone knows and I remember I'm coming down the hallway you could hear the commotion coming down the hallway my mom's out there crying hysterically just saying leave him alone he's dead leave him alone he's dead my brother's out there you know wrestling with the cops and the paramedics and finally after all this and I'm again I'm, I'm in my bed just knuckles clenched to the sheets like this and uh, I didn't want to say anything. You know, I, I was thinking that maybe they didn't know I was even in there. And I heard they get they get everybody back. And I the paramedics, you know, open, click the stretcher up a little bit because they had to pivot it to get it in the room. And uh, they said, on three, we're going to kick the door. And I heard them say that. And they got, you know, everyone was back. It was calm. And uh, I hear one, two. So I jump out of bed and I open the door and I'm like, I'm alive. And there was no one there. It was me in a hallway in my underwear by myself. And it was, it was August 9th of 2009. And, uh, it's crazy. It was the day I literally decided to, to start living for the first time at 28. Dude, that's some crazy shit. You know, that's God. Yeah, so you want to know it's, what's weird is I've told that story. I've been clean now almost 15 years from all mood or mind altering substances. Nothing's went in my body. And mm -hmm. I used to tell the story of I hallucinated. And I didn't say I hallucinated on this time telling the story to you. And I went and spoke in front of, or I, I did this on Brad Lee's podcast. Mm -hmm. And he goes, dude, you didn't hallucinate. He goes, that was, that was a power greater than you. It's God. Absolutely. So I quit saying I hallucinated. Yeah, that's his Holy Spirit. Without dude, a shadow of a doubt. Dude, listen, it's like when you go to a store and something says, pay for this person's groceries. Yes. That doesn't yeah. happen all the time. Right. But when it happens, it doesn't just accidentally happen. Yeah. You're like, this is weird, yeah. but uh, I'm going to pay <laughs> for y'all's groceries. <laughs> And they're like, no, 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 no. And I'm like, take the card, man. We're paying mm. for the groceries. It's like, because I can't, I, can, I have to do this. Yeah. Um, if I don't do this, it's going to drive me crazy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And uh, that's all it was. Yeah. I love it, dude. But dude, that is cool, dude. So at that point, you're obviously, it's a shit show. It's a shit show. Right? So, yeah. So what do you do? You start cleaning yourself up. Yep. You start, you start going. And uh, obviously the next couple of years you get back in work, you start exercising. What do you do? Yep. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt the podcast. All right. So as you're listening to my man, obviously cool, killer comeback story. This guy's crushing it, killing the game. If you're in virtual sales, he does so many things. But if you're in virtual sales, it means that like you make a living by the phone. You guys, you see this number on the screen, you need to text this number. This guy's training modules, his courses that you can take, his curriculum will absolutely show you how to be a ninja on the phone. Not only how to smash everybody in the industry, but just how to be the best and make what you're worth. So if you're going to take the time to, you know, be on the phone, you might as well get paid all the dough, right? So you guys text this number below. Um, he'll train you. He'll help you. Any questions you have, shoot him a text. And uh, let's get back to the video. I'll tell you exactly what I did. I started taking suggestions for the first time in my life mm. because my way Write didn't that work. Down. That's a good one. My way did not work for 28 years. So you start years. running a new play. 
Started running a new play of someone that's done it before me. I, mm-hmm. I had eight dollars to my name, hopped on a train that brought me back to my hometown, um, which ultimately there was a guy there that threw me on a plane to go out to Fort Lauderdale to check myself into a treatment center. And this time uh, I wasn't getting clean to save a job, save a, a relationship, make my mother happy. I was literally getting clean to save my life for the first time. I wasn't doing it for anyone other than myself. But I was taking suggestions from people that had some clean time already that were, you know, used to be drug addicts or alcoholics. And uh, he threw me on a plane, brought me down to South Florida, checked myself into a treatment center, stayed in that facility for like 60 to 70 days, somewhere in that that range. And while I was in there, I thought I was just going to go back to Chicago. I cleaned myself up and I was going to get back in the union. And again, where I said I started taking suggestions, the, some of the facilitators in that treatment center, they were like, I don't think it's good for you to go home. I think you should check yourself into a, a halfway house. Mm-hmm. So I went into a halfway house. Uh, I stayed there for like six or seven months. Now, the day I walked out of treatment was the day I met my wife. I actually mm-hmm. met her three days prior to getting out of treatment. That's so great. she met me at my all-time lowest. I was literally still in a treatment center. She had four and a half years clean now at this time because she used to she used to bang heroin. Yeah. And um so you, it, see you guys grow together through this, but she was way ahead of you. She was ahead of me mm-hmm. and she saw something in me that I definitely didn't see in myself yet. That's cool. Like she had the confidence and the you know, I always say she's my number one cheerleader, man. Mm-hmm. Whenever I have that self doubt, she's always there next to me saying, You got this. Come on now, man. Mm-hmm. So I uh, ended up getting in, t- went to a halfway house, started, tr- you know, she went and bought me a, a nice, uh, you know, slacks and a button up shirt and this tattoo makeup to try and go and find a job. And nobody would hire me. Like I legitimately could not find a job. Uh, I ended up being a bus boy. Like I was a bus boy at a restaurant mm-hmm. at 28 years old, two buses there, two buses home. I worked there for like a, uh, two weeks, three weeks, they ended up handing me a paycheck for two weeks worth of work. It was 146 or $147. Mm-hmm. I still have that check today. And, uh, and, um, I remember she picked me up and I had the efforts. I'm like, F this. I want to go back to Chicago. There's nothing here for me. And she's like, maybe you just need to settle down and, and go to a meeting, raise your hand, get vulnerable. I did that walk, you know, she brought me back to my halfway house and the piece of paper that has ultimately, again, this is a very pivotal moment in my life. She drops me off at my halfway house. Now, mind you, she's paying my halfway house rent where I got to rent a bed. And at one moment, at one point of me living in this halfway house, there was bed bugs, like all this stuff. Sure. And uh, she drops me off at my halfway house walk around, I get ready to open the door to go into where, you know, my room was. And there was a white piece of paper. It said, telemarketers wanted $15 an hour. And I ended up calling that number. And I said, listen, I live in a halfway house. I'm full of tattoos. I got 90 days clean. I don't have a license. I'm trying to get my stuff together. Like I was just honest with them. I didn't want to go there and then be like, dude, we can't hire you because the way you look. Mm -hmm. So I just got it all out of the way before I even showed up. And they're like, you're just the kind of people we're looking for. That's so cool. And like, I got into a call center and the le- the rest is history. Dude, worked there for a year and a half, became their number one guy, not because I was the most talented. I just outworked everybody. Yeah. Like when I say I was hungry, I was hungry. Yeah, you were eating that shit alive. I was hungry. Yeah, you hated your whole life. Yeah, man. Yeah. And I saw, I saw an opportunity for me. I saw guys that look like me, walk like me, talk like me you know, in this call center of two, 300 people. And uh, I became his number one guy in a year and a half. And then I felt uh, I cared about the company more than anybody that was there. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I was the first one there, the last one to leave. They had to let me in and tell me you got to go. And uh, after a year and a half, me and my wife were like, someone brought me an idea of you could get somebody out of a timeshare And they used to, this business model already existed, but they would get a bunch of people in a room, pitch them from a podium, and then break them off into tables. And I'm like, if they can do that in rooms like that, I can do it over the telephone. Mm -hmm. Someone gave me the idea. Me and my wife bought a stack of leads, started in a bedroom, and we ended up in in nine and a half years building the largest timeshare exit company in the United States. 
Yep. Grew That's what it, I heard. Grew it to, uh, I had, we had over 150 people in in our office in uh, Fort Lauderdale. Mm-hmm. We were building out a 30,000 square foot facility. Mm-hmm. Um, we were getting ready to exit to a private equity firm. We had, uh, we had offers from... Uh, 147 million for a hundred percent down to like 97 million. Um, the deal we ultimately ended up signing an LOI with letter of intent is, uh, we were going to sell, f- uh, 51% of the business for 54 million. Me and my wife were going to retain 49% of it for the second sale. Mm-hmm. And so it would have been a nine figure exit for us. And, uh, like 60 days before the deal was to be done, we ended up getting sued by two of the largest timeshare developers in the world. Yeah. And uh, by at this time, you know, me and my wife, we got all the houses, the cars. We're make we're netting eight million dollars a year at this point. Like life was really good. So I want everybody to remember this just real quick because this is important. You know, as we do our podcast, we yeah. always try to keep them like where they're, they're where they have something really to chew on big time. Right now. You're coaching people on 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 a level that can take anyone without going through any of this experience yeah. to another level quick. Yes. Going back, you literally go through this crack life, right? Which everybody, no matter what your problem is, yep. his problem is, we all have the same nasty ass problem. Yep. They're just they're just different. Of course. Okay. One person's like, "Oh my god, I can't believe that." And you may be like, "Oh my god, I can't believe all that." Right. It's not crack. Yeah. It's porn. It's, it's alcohol. Yeah, it's it's some whatever. Form of poison. Yeah. But anyways. You, you get sued, you're 60 days away, you guys go through this, yeah, and then literally on the flip side of this, which you said just a minute ago, um, you you find a wholesale real estate. Yep. And you start over. We st- literally picked, I, I picked the phone back up, sat down in the seat. Just like the damn telemarketing deal that you started you the calling sign when you were in the halfway house. Yes. And so I just want to tell everybody on this call right now, like, I think this is super important because I think everybody can relate with, I don't care where you are. What I care about is where are you going? Yes. Okay. I don't care what's going on today. What can tomorrow look like? Um, It doesn't take long. You made a million dollars in a year doing wholesale real estate. A million and a half. Which was net your way. Net. Yeah. So if anybody, I think this is important. Everybody knows if anybody is in any place right now, like today's the restart day. Yeah, of course. Okay. Um, I would want to know every way that you speak, every way that you talk, the scripts that you use, and you have all that recorded. You, you, you Everybody can train on that. Make sure everybody who's watching this, you guys see this number below? I want you guys to shoot him a text, okay? If you guys want to learn how he's built these so quickly, he teaches that now. Yeah. Which is crazy. And I know you do Zoom call like masterminds and yep. stuff like that, but also there's training curriculums that people can actually, without getting on a Zoom call, yes. they can actually just train on and they can do it in their own time and write down everything. Uh, lastly, one piece of advice, right? Cause I'm going to do, I'm, we're going to do a lot of podcasts together. We're going to talk about a lot of stuff. You're, you're about to blow up in this industry and go to a whole nother level and do it right this time. What's one piece of advice that you would give anybody that doesn't have the life that they want right now? I believe sales and leadership yeah. will get you rich Yep. and you've proved that your sales skill and yep. your work ethic will make you rich. What's something that you would, what message that you would give? Man, to, to someone that's getting ready to get started or wants to change. Anybody that's is, ready to go to another level. So where your feet are today, they absolutely do not have to be there tomorrow. And I'm like, I'm a living example of that multiple times over again. What I had to do is, is literally put the blinders on, block out all the noise and just get to work. Like for me, it's a lot of people will see it. Yeah, you can you can lead a horse to a water. You can't make him drink. You got to take action. Like if you ain't willing to put in the work, you're going to continue to sit on the sidelines and just watch all of us do our damn thing. Like social media can sometimes be very uh, tricky. tricky. Yeah, but you got to do, I like what you did. And I'm going to remember this. You go on, on the count of three, you go, I'm alive. Yeah. <laughs> and no one was there. Right. I just would pay all, I paid. <laughs> Ten million dollars to see that. That'd yeah, be awesome. So, uh, but but that's what you got to do. Is you got to be like, I'm alive. Yeah, the and action. And you got to just man. restart, um, guys. Uh, how do they follow you on Instagram? The Eric Klein, E R I C C L I N E. The Eric Klein. Guys, make sure you follow him on Instagram. This guy's about to blow up. He's going to be kicking some ass. He has a lot of students. He's helping them grow and go to new levels and make a lot of money. So I want you guys to reach out to him. I love that he's an overcomer. I love 
overcomers. Those are the future leaders in the world. 95% of the world is lost. Mm. We need other people that are lost that change to show us how they changed. So Eric, I'm grateful for you, man. I appreciate you, dude. Just a short amount of time that we have this podcast. Bro, there's so much shit to chew on. Yeah. I guarantee, dude, I mean, on the other side of that camera, there's probably a million people's lives that will be changed. Thank you. Appreciate it. So love you, bro. Make sure you guys hit him up. DM him on Instagram. Or you guys can just text the number below, and uh, we'll see where it goes. Cool. Okay, love you guys. Have a blessed day. See you in the next video. I don't get what I want. I get what I need every single day. Hey, guys, I just want to tell you the true one percenters. You made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor. Share it with a friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video. Comment below so I know who you are. Set your notifications. And then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon. And I promise you that my skills are getting sharper. So I'm going to get charted. Can't be guarded. Nah, I'm the one to get retarded.